Well, hello everybody. We're back in the studio. I have a very special guest and a guy I've been looking forward to interviewing for a very long time. This is uh, one of my my favorite steel guys. This is John hey. Benedict. Hi everybody. John is out of uh, Tucson, and if you've been into the gallery, you've seen the uh, metal ladies that are the grid patterns that you can look through, the beautiful contemporary steel pieces that we have of yours that. Uh, can go inside or outside. This guy's got such a deep uh, amount of work and things that you do with it. It's it's just amazing. So yeah, thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and like where where are you from? First off, uh, originally um, born in Dallas. Really, um, I've been in Tucson. I want to say the better part of thirty years. So that's definitely nice. Um, I don't know. And how did you get into doing steel stuff? Was that you know, I just was... knew I needed to. Um, really? Yeah, what was your I, trade before you did this, actually? I'm going what... to back up. I was supposed to be an artist, like, from a kid. It's like I was doodling and drawing and not doing my homework and getting in trouble for it wow. in elementary school. And I just stuck with it. You sound like you know, me. Just, just stuck with it. Right? That's awesome. Right? And then um, I guess it's been probably close to 30 years ago, I just I knew I needed a weld. I bought a welder and started sticking stuff together and figured it out. Now I have a full-blown fabrication shop with CNC plasma cutters and power hammers and Wow. Like so that. when you first started, were you doing artwork or were you just you know, doing things, were you fabricating for people and doing, you know, like you house know, uh, stuff or anything like a, of that nature? Uh, with the, the art in general, it started out as gifts. But with, with steel, um, I don't know, I, I kind of made some stuff and I had somebody come over from Craig's, or Craigslist to look at some old books I had and it wasn't even finished and they bought it off my table. Wow. And so I thought, well, I'm on to something. You know, so I started building more of them and then did my first show about 16 years ago. Wow. Yeah, and then after the show, I, I might have, I don't know. How have you eluded me all this time? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, huh, you would have thought I would have found you a little sooner. Somewhere, yeah, something, yeah. Like, something like that. Huh. Uh, at the, my first show, um, I did, a, I don't know, I might have had 10 pieces at it. Really? And where and then, was this at? Uh, it was part of the Gym and Mineral show in Tucson. In Tucson? Nice. Yeah, and then when the show was done, I started counting how much time I had in it and all that. And I was like, snap, that was pretty cool. So the next year, I doubled my product and then counted numbers when I was done. And then I think by year four, I did 18 shows in one year. Wow. So just like a shotgun effect. Just boom. Trying Ooh, to out there. Yeah, I figured it out. And then over the next probably four or five years, I started figuring out, well, I don't do good at these kind of shows. So I, I started pushing away and then I've gravitated to um, like um, fine art shows and, nice. and that sort of stuff. And so. fine galleries, of yes, course. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Yeah, we've done very well with your work. We love it. Uh, people are fascinated by it. It's uh, contemporary, it's ad abstract, it's, you know, realism. There's so many elements to it. It's really neat. And to know that you've been doing it this long is even more amazing because like I said, I can't believe I've never seen <laughs> you out there doing that kind of thing. Right. So I know you've recently completed a huge yes. undertaking and is that the biggest piece you've ever done? Is no, it's the second biggest, but this is definitely the most um, prominent. Yeah. Like this is this one's badass. So tell everybody, because obviously oh, I'm okay. talking in code over here, so it's a... <laughs> yeah, he's probably gonna insert a picture into this video so you guys can actually see what it is, but it's a, it's a meditating angel his legs are crossed and his hands are in, in this position and he's got some big wings that come up and he's a, a 21 foot tall going to a spiritual healing center in Nashville, Tennessee and he's built out of 3 16 plate and wow. sheets of steel that it took was 8 foot wide by 20 foot long wow. to, to get it so you can get one, you know, at least the biggest part out of one sheet beyond. The, the coolest thing is that we have little mini versions down inside the gallery, which yes. we'll go downstairs here in a minute. We'll look at a couple of your pieces. Yes. You can tell us a bit about, you know, how you go about even putting something like sure. these things sure. together. Because uh, you must move more steel than uh, any steel workers building skyscrapers in here. I swear, I, <laughs> I, I, I cannot believe how much you put out. It's Yeah, thank you. How many pieces do you think you create a year? Um, well, uh, 20, let's see. 2018 and 2019, each year I sold 1,100 pieces. Wow. And, and when you think about it, that's three a day. That is... And I gotta produce that many. Wow. And you don't know, some of them are very simple. Some of them I can build a lot of them in a day, but some of them take three or four days to complete. When you go about building a repertoire of work, do you kind of conveyor belt know you, you're gonna produce 10 of this one day and 
couple of these and yeah it's just a production then, line kind of thing it makes sense and like, so it was most everything done in a CAD kind of drawing too when you, know, you, when you conceptualize or do you just go for raw steel and start build it's it's gone to that it's gone to um, CAD drawings yeah um, I guess it's been a number of years ago I was doing the design work and then having other companies cut my stuff out mm -hmm. and then one time I waited six weeks for my parts wow and then so eventually a lot went on machine yeah. And so it makes way more sense just to draw it on CAD and then cut it out. Cause you it, do it yourself. Yeah, literally, um, I only figured it's about 90 times faster. Did you go to school or learn anything about sculpture? You just you not giving gifts. You just did your own thing, huh? Yeah. That's so cool. I think that's also what produces some of the best, uh, you know, unique styles and looks for a person because you're not trying to follow anybody's work. You're, Correct. You're, you're blank can. This is... You know, you're forging your own correct, style. Correct, correct. You know, I've got an opinion that um, if um, if an artist stays true to his or her own ideas, you look unique. If you can't be everyone, you look like everyone. Right. And so I've just I've just stayed true to my, my own ideas. And, you know, besides that, it was, um, I've got the gift of ideas. Like in 10 or 15 minutes, I can draw down 10 or 15 solid ideas. I just can't build them all. Right. I just can't get to them. So yeah. I just pick my battles. That's you know? amazing. Well, I like the battles you pick. Let's go downstairs. We'll have a look at some of the work. And uh, you, you folks can actually see the images we have in the gallery live on hand. Of course, you can call us. He does great special orders. Yes. He does amazing <laughs> customs. We can build you a 20-foot uh, you know, cross-legged angel yes. and, uh, or anything else for your matter, uh, whatever you think. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in uh, two Thank seconds. You. Thank you. All right, we are down in the main room with John, and this this is one of my favorite pieces. This is Angelica, mm -hmm. and uh, literally she's got to be well, it's five yeah, it's plus like feet like tall a, at least. Like a normal size. Yeah. yeah, she's got bones of steel. Yes, yes. Yeah, the hair is flexible. Totally. Tell me a bit about it. How? Well, um, how many pieces are in this? First off, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably close to three hundred pieces. Wow. Um, now, these slices literally go all the way through her. Like, this is one continuous piece that goes all the way through, and they slip together like they're slotted. So they slip together like that. And um, it takes uh, five different computer programs to get from a concept to pieces that are cut, and then I have to assemble it. Wow. And, and what's the time on assembly? You know what? Yeah, you'll be like blown this. away. I can build her in like two and a half days, three days. Wow. All right, that's cutting it. And that's so, amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank a you. lot of work in these. How, how do they weather outside? I you know, really good. Um, uh, pretty much anything in the direct weather will eventually rust, but she'll do it beautifully. Right. Uh, it'll just get a patina on it. I've got a, I've got a sculpture that's been in the desert for like 18 years, and um, if you look at it, it's just got a really pretty patina on it. If you really look at it, it's not even pitting yet. Wow. The damn thing's going to outlast me. Like by the time it has a problem, oh, I'm not going to care. It's be around for <laughs> right. hundreds of years, I would right. think. You, you, you do. Uh, you can't spray like a marine coating or something yeah, this, on it, right? Yeah, this actually has an uh, exterior clear coat on it. An exterior clear coat? Yeah, and what I, what I like about it, I've used products that are $200 a gallon that don't do as well as this. Like those other products, when they go bad and flake off, it look like a bad sun. Right. Whereas this just gently fades. You know, I nice can give you the name of the product if you keep it sprayed on there, but nice. I'm, I'm about the zero maintenance. Yeah, just let it go. Just let it go. Let, it, 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 let nature have its yeah. way. I, they do look beautiful when they're patina too, and getting a little of that natural rust in them looks mm -hmm. amazing, in, in my opinion. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is one of many sculptures we have in the gallery. We've got abstracts of John's. We'll go over and peek at another piece real quick here, the Nautilus, which is a beautiful piece. Got some prehistoric elements to it. So uh, you, you want to the uh, the big angel that you're going to put a picture on? Uh huh. Is built this style. Yes. So the slices go both horizontally and vertically. I want to elevate this piece too because the cool thing about it is when you crouch down, you can see, see all the way through, through her, and she almost disappears. Yes. It's really, yes. it's got yes. a very cool unique effect. look. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. And we're back over here looking at a Nautilus piece. I love this one. The, the beauty of... Uh, the c contemporary feel of this with the actual Nautilus, and of course, this is like what, 130 million something you know, like that. Fossils. Yeah, it's it's fossil. pretty amazing. Uh, another beautiful piece by John that can go inside or outside. We've also got some uh, plain King style angels and, and so many pieces. I just recommend coming into the gallery and having a first hand look. And if you'd like, you can go on our website 
Uh, it is ianrussellart.com and view more of John's work as well as this video, which you're, if you're already viewing it, you're already on <laughs> YouTube. So hell, you know, we got that covered there. Yes. But anyway, you've got lots of ways to find us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, John. Always great to see you, my friend. My and uh, we look forward to uh, representing you many years and having many gorgeous things come in the door. Fantastic. All right, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, guys.